Hey guys, how's it going? It's again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to give you a video on the top 5 tips and tricks for VS Code. I really love VS Code, so I'm going to give you an overview of what those files are, which one of them is going to be removing unnecessary using statements. That's one that I get asked a lot. So I want to show you how we go about doing something like that. So I'm going to go into my project, one project that I've been working on. And I'm just going to do code that and open it up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be focusing on this, basically on the left area here. We're going to be using this area just as a, you know, as a guideline of what we we can do. So in this class, I have, you know, I have a lot of things in here. I, I actually purposely duplicated the using statements. I can, I can actually do, we can do add more, some that we're not using. Let's say that we, we're not using management and we can add a couple of more here, instrumentation. And we can also add, perhaps we can add some Unity ones. Say that we're using Unity and we are not using analytics. So the way the VS Code works is it'll give you, so you can see that this one is focused because the color of the green is stronger. Where on this one is a little bit lighter, a lighter green. So a lot of people ask me, Dilbert, how do we, you know, how do I get rid of the, the using statements that we're not using? So one way that you can do is you can select the area. You can select everything if you wanted to. I normally just select the area that I want to remove the using statements. And then you can just basically pr press the control key and then period, and then hit enter. And it's gonna show you, you know, basically it's gonna remove everything that you're not using. You can also click on this little button here. It shows you a bulb and it's gonna do the same thing, but I think you want to be faster and use the shortcut key. So you can just select, you know, that area, again, hold control period, and then you select remove unnecessary strings. And that's going to be really helpful. That's something that I do as I go through every class. So if we need to go to another class, for instance, I guess most of these ones are okay. They don't have using statements that I'm not using. So most of these ones are okay. But as you're touching each class, it's always good to do that. The other one that, I, that I've that i been playing around with, let me go ahead and make this a little smaller, is navigating methods. So this class right now has, this one is not that big, but it has a start method. It has initialize button. It also has an ungroup event, and then various methods that you know were added by Alex. Alex B is being contributing to this class, and I've been working with him. But anyways, you can do Control Shift period, and you're gonna see that it shows you, you know, anything that this class has. Another way that I've been doing, if I select this method, you can see that if I click here or if I hold the Control Shift period, you can see that it shows you, you know, I can navigate with my arrow keys, go down and up. And it basically is going to take you to those classes. I think that's helpful when you have pretty long, you know, pretty long classes that have a lot of methods. Another thing that I also found out, let's say that you want to go to the initialize buttons and let's say that you had hundreds of methods, which to me, in my opinion, it's back coding because you shouldn't have classes that have that many methods. But if it happens, and I know that it happens because I'm a developer and I know how that works, let's say that you want to search for initialize buttons. So we can just type it in here. And it's going to basically find it and see that by typing in, it basically adds that. I can also remove it by clearing it out or I can just type in start and hit enter. It's gonna take me to that. I can do control shift period again. And let's say that we wanna go to the last one, which, which is the unclick. I can say unclick button and hit enter and it's gonna take you to that. So it's gonna make it really nice for, you know, for navigating through your code. Specifically, like I said, if you have long classes, we can find if we find another one here, this one doesn't have that many methods, but you know, one of them that you go quite a bit is going to be the up, the update method. So yeah, you can search for it and just you know type in update, and that also works if you want to do that. But you can also you know, escape it and then just you know Control Shift period, and then you can go back to get device. So it's going to make it really fast to do that with your keyboard. So that's what that is, you know, the navigating methods and typing you know typing to get to them by holding the control plus and shift and basically control shift and period. And it's gonna take you to that. the plus designate that we're gonna be pressing a different button. The other tool that I've been using a lot, which is, is really helpful is the built-in tools that are part of VS Code. So if you wanna know what you change, what you can kind of see here, this one says that there are you know changes in, in this file. This one also says there's also one change in this file. And I can also go down here and find out exactly what was changed. In this case, I think it's just this method, it's, let's see, it's obsolete. So you shouldn't be using it. It just shows you that this one has an obsolete method. And then in this case, also 
This one looks like it's an obsolete. So it's showing us that there are four obsolete methods. This one show, show us a U, meaning that there are actually, you know, some changes in this file. And one of the things that I've been doing is I use the Git, basically the built-in Git, which is for source control. And you can click on this button here. It'll show you everything that, you know, has been changed. And I'm going to make this bigger so that we can see everything. So if I wanted to see, you know, what was changed, I can just select the file that was changed. And you can see that in this case, this is a new file. I added a new file. So it shows you that in the left pane, it means that this file didn't exist. And in the right pane, it means that this was everything that was added. The aim designates that there, were, there was a change made to that file. So we can look at the manifest.json. And you can see, you know, I actually incremented this version on the legacy input helpers. It looks like I actually removed that because it doesn't show here. The interaction toolkit shows that I upgraded it to version 4. This one shows that I actually upgraded the Oculus API. So if I wanted to remove those changes, I could easily just click on this arrow, discard changes, and I can click on this card and it's going to discard those changes. You can see that I can go back to my previous state. I can also do the same thing with JSON here. This is a different type of file and I can also, you know, either discard the changes or I can stage the changes, meaning that I can, you know, I'm okay and satisfied with those changes. And I can basically commit them by adding a commit method here. And then you have all these different options in here. If you want to push your changes, if you want to pull your changes. So if you're familiar with Git, you're going to know, you know, what these commands are. I'm pretty familiar with them, so, but I don't want to walk you through them because this video is not so much about source control than it is to, you know, VS Code. So a lot of, a lot of basically built-in functionality for Git, it's been added to VS Code. So we're going to go close out of that and we can go back to our state here. So built-in Git tools are really cool in VS Code. I really recommend them. So the other one that I've been using a lot is partial diff. And partial diff you can find by just searching in here. We can also show you the ones that I already have enabled. So if we look at the partial diff, this one is developed by this person. I'm not going to try to, to say his name because it's really hard to say his name. But just go ahead and download it. It has, you know, 207,000 you know, votes and I guess people downloading it and then also all stars is really, really helpful. I use it a lot. And the way that it works, let's say that we wanted to look at something in Git. So if we can go and find, so let's say that I wanted to compare, you know, I'm just going to add another line here. It's like a couple more lines. Let's say that this one is going to be var and this was device two. And then this one was going to be device three. And I'm just making things up just so that so that I can explain it to you. So let's say that we have this changing here, but I want to change, I want to check what source control has. So I can go to Chrome and I can just go into that repo. I know that repo is already being pushed. So I can go to that. If this class, you're looking for that class, which is the input manager. So I can go to my repo. I can go into my scripts. I can go into my input manager, go into raw here. I can copy that. So I'm going to copy this into my clipboard go back in here, select everything, and I can right click anywhere in here. And I can do a comparison to what it is already in my clipboard. And I can say, you know, do a comparison. So what I did is I grabbed this file and I compare it with the local changes that I had. And I can see that I changed these two lines. So this is really cool when it comes to, you know, you wanna, you wanna do make, you know, you wanna change something and you wanna check to see what you change. And it doesn't matter where it's coming from, you can just do a change, you know, a check to see your changes. I can also do other things in here. I can do compare text with previous selection. I can compare text in visible editors. So there's just a lot of changes. The one that I use a lot is going to be this one, the one that I can check with my clipboard changes. So I really recommend that you use that tool. So let's go ahead and go back here and go ahead and look at the... So those are the top four that I really enjoy. And then the other one that I really, really enjoy because I use the terminal quite a bit it's going to be the built-in terminal. So you can get to that by clicking on the terminal here and just selecting your terminal and it's going to open it up. Or you can use the shortcut key, as it says in here, control shift and then the tilde. And it's going to basically open it up. And the cool thing is that you don't have to have, you know, PowerShell or Git bash open. You can just use, you know, this just takes another window. You can just use the built-in functionality here. And I can also do, you know, my Git your changes I can also, you know, navigate to other folders. I can do basically everything that I could do in the other windows. I think I have Python in here as well. And, oh, I don't have Python built in, but if you have Python installed as part of your terminal, you can also, you know, work with that in here. 
and I can also open another, you know, VS Code window if I wanted to open it, and that works, you know, like it would in your terminal. So that's everything that I wanted to cover, guys, for today. If you guys have any questions about the top five tips and tricks for VS Code, please let me know. And thank you very much for your time.